Hello everyone, thanks for tuning in today's second video. We're going to have a look at the ECM WFX Steady model for today's second video. It's Tuesday, so we're going to do our extended uh, European outlook. In theory, looking at the weather the next uh, 30 days, next four weeks, it's like a 30 day look ahead. But we might as well show you week five and six data uh, as well as we can uh, do that for you. So I shall get on with it uh, in a moment. Just say that the first video released today was our UK weather forecast. Just a couple of minutes, have a look at weather for the next few days. Nice little. Uh, 7 a.m. upload and uh, so have, have a look about it have not yet done so and we're going to be back later on with your 10 to 14 day update which will include all of the regular features of course right so uh, let's begin then uh, with week one mean sea level pressure anomalies this will take us uh, from the 5th through to the 12th of April the coming uh, week or this week uh, situation is that we have a mid-Atlantic ridge sitting to the west of Ireland and the UK and extending up to Iceland and Greenland with a trough of low pressure digging down through Scandinavia and Northern Europe. And this is going to pull cold or is pulling cold northerly winds into the western side of Europe. At the same time, with higher pressure through southern and southeastern parts of Europe and Mediterranean, things should be quite a lot milder, I would have thought, on the eastern and southeastern side of Europe. 500 millibar height anomaly from the North Pole view down looks like this again a mid-Atlantic ridge extending up to Greenland trough of low pressure digging in through Scandinavia Northern Europe down come those northerly winds on the western side of Europe uh, and into the northwest of Europe as well a uh, higher pressure through the Med might draw up something a little bit milder on the eastern side of the Mediterranean Temperature anomalies uh, look like that's a cold week coming up across many parts of Europe, uh, actually. Most areas are colder than average. Look at this, right from Ireland, the UK, in the far west, all the way over to the west of Russia in the uh, east. You have to go down the extreme southeastern corner of the Med to find anything above average. So even like, I thought maybe the southeast Europe could be a bit milder, but actually no, the Balkans, for example, is cold on average. Greece, Turkey, in cold on average, the Black Sea looks colder than average. We've got Spain and Portugal down in the far southwest of Europe, in the north of Africa, looking a little bit milder, <coughs> milder excuse me, and in this extreme north, to the Arctic Circle, it's a little bit milder than average through there. But these are the exceptions, and it's a cold or a very cold week to come across the vast majority of your most parts of the Med, even, are below average away from uh, Spain. And um, precipitation-wise, we look like this. A lot of variation uh, for week one. Uh, precipitation so it's rather dry and average in the north uh, rather wet and I, should, I should say in the north dry and average in the northwest so that's where the blocking is sitting of course that keeps Ireland of the UK largely dry Scandinavia it's a little bit above average for precipitation so there could be some significant snow through there uh, down into the central western part of Europe above average precipitation again that could be rain or snow uh, this eastern part of Europe so from the Balkans going up towards the west of Russia I mean, down to, into Greece. Uh, it's largely dry on average through there, although it's pretty wet around the Black Sea. And then as we extend out into the Mediterranean, a lot of dry weather uh, through the Med, really. So, so the emphasis from Italy back to Spain is on relatively dry conditions. Really the temperatures, but of a big story, though, in the week, I think. Very, very cold for the time of year. Right, go through to week two. This will take us from the 12th through to the 19th of April. This one looking more anti-cyclonic, really. So we still have the high pressure around uh, Greenland and Iceland, but the ridge is extending down into the UK and then on into Northern Europe as well. Not quite as high of a pressure across Southern Europe, but still generally a bit above average uh, for, for pressure there. So overall, quite a dry week coming up uh, in week two, I would have thought. Quite a high pressure dominated week. The 500 millibar height on looks a bit strange, though. Showing uh, like a mid-Atlantic ridge heading up towards Greenland and high pressure over on the eastern side of Europe. But this area looks like it could be a bit of a trough. So it could be a little bit more unsettled through that area, perhaps. And you might envisage from the mean sea level pressure anomaly. Week 2 temperature anomaly is still looking rather on the cold side, certainly for western parts of Europe. So again, that would, I suppose, sort of indicate there might be a bit of a trough and a dip in the jet stream. Uh, through there. Northeastern Europe is milder than average. Southeastern Europe is a little bit uh, below average. Generally looking quite cold again across many parts of Europe, and especially so in these western areas Germany, France, Belgium, Holland, Netherlands, into the UK, and Ireland, up to Scandinavia, especially Norway. 
looking uh, really quite cold again, I think. Uh, week two, um, precipitation anomaly uh, looks like that. So uh, a little bit wetter uh, than average through like uh, Italy and going up in towards the Alpine area. That could be snow, significant snow, of course, uh, despite the fact that it's like mid-April in the Alps. Um, so <clears throat> for Western of Europe, it's likely to be a bit drier than average again. Uh, and, and this southeast corner also looking rather dry as well. Northern Europe, the precipitation is closer to average. Right, that's that one done. Let's have a look at week three. Uh, this is being 19th to the 26th of April. Um, weakening signals now, but it looks like we've got lower pressure developing in the Atlantic across northern Europe. So this might be turning more unsettled or bringing in more of an Atlantic flow. Over on the far eastern side of Europe, a bit of high pressure there in the east. Otherwise, there's this large area, majority of Europe, where it's difficult to decipher what is taking place. There's no particular signal. Let's see if the 500 millibar height only sheds any more light. Um, so definitely it looks more unsettled for northern and northwestern Europe with lower pressure up here and uh, in terms of jet stream, higher pressure through southern and eastern parts of Europe, drawing up warmer winds over on the east side of Europe, but certainly more unsettled in the far north and northwestern part of Europe. Week three temperature anomaly. It's gradually recovering, but still looks rather on the cold side in this extreme northwestern corner. So Scandinavia down to either the UK again and, and sort of even North Sea, uh, looking largely on the cold and average side. Southern Europe is going milder than average, so becoming quite warm through uh, much of the Med, especially the western part of their training. And eastern and northeast parts of Europe also looking a little bit warmer as well. So a bit of a recovering temperature taking place there. Uh, in week three. Um, week three precipitation definitely turning more unsettled in the north and in the west of Europe with lower pressure coming back. So, so this is a wetter end to April for northwest Europe, drier in this eastern and southeast part of Europe, perhaps. And then uh, week four takes us from the 26th of April to the 3rd of May. No particular signal there, uh, but it's useful anyway for, uh, for, the, for the mean cell pressure normally. The 500 millibar height, I mean, also looking rather elusive. Again, not much of a signal. There is a ridge that's over on the eastern, southeast side of Europe, so that's the strongest signal, drawing up something milder into the east, southeast of Europe, or warmer into the east and southeast of Europe. Otherwise, a bit of a mid Atlantic ridge, probably still suggesting the Jackson could be on a northwest, southeast alignment to the western part of Europe. The temperature anomaly. Uh, for week four, again, weakening signals, but gradually a slow recovery. Temperature looks like it's taking place, and the precipitation anomaly. Weak signals, probably a bit drier than I've shown out to the northwest. So I just read through weeks five and six. So week five means cell pressure on the 3rd to the 10th of May, looks like that. Again, very weak signals uh, there. Week, uh, week five, 500 millibar height anomaly. Again, weak signals, maybe size something a bit more of Western Europe, though, if above average heights start to build around uh, France, that could start to bring up warmer air from the south into the west and the northwest of Europe. It might do. The uh, week five temperature anomaly just looks like it's generally warming up. So week by week, things gradually get warmer across Europe after this very, very cold uh, week one. And uh, the precipitation anomaly, again, not much of a signal, but maybe a little bit on the drier side there, week five. And then lastly, week six, temperature to the 17th of May, looks like that. Again, no particularly useful signal for mean, mean sea level pressure. Uh, 500 millibar heights, again, no no useful signal there either. Temperature anomalies for week uh, six, maybe a bit on the cool and average side, just to our north, otherwise warm and average in most areas, uh, or, or average to warm and average. And uh, week six, precipitation anomaly, again, nothing particularly useful doing there. So, we, I mean, we're starting off really, really cold. Uh, really cold start across most parts of uh, Europe for this week. And then we're going to gradually lift the temperature up. But it is a slow old process. And like for Scandinavia, UK, Ireland, maybe France, maybe the low countries, those sort of areas. It looks like it's not going to be until the end of April that we might get something, you know, um, rather warmer. So it really is a slow old process to lift ourselves out of this uh, cold blast that we are currently in. Other parts of Europe will see things warming up uh, a lot quicker than that, especially across southern, eastern and southeastern parts of Europe, I think. 
Right, that's it. And I was getting to May, then, then uh, the signals go so weak that there's nothing useful at the moment to be uh, ascertained for May, I don't think. Right, that's it for uh, this one then. Uh, we're going to be back later on to the 14 day update, which will include all of the regular features. We're having a cold blast, I've already said. Um, so we'll bring you up to date with all of that. So uh, come back later on uh, for the European Outlook, though. Uh, that's all for now, and thanks for watching.